the Bosch SX. It's a 55 Nm motor, but it's also 600 watts maximum. And that's on par with many of the full power MTB motors, like the Bosch Performance CX 85 Nm. So, does that mean the Bosch SX can compete with the full power motors? Probably not, based on the 55 Nm rating. At least not in all cases, but with the 600 watts max, will it compete in some cases? We put it up against the Bosch CX and the Shimano EP801, both 85 Nm motors. First, we do an uphill test. We used to call this uphill test the 60, 80 and 100 cadence tests. But looking at the data, it's really difficult maintaining 60 cadence when testing or when doing these runs. So we're gonna call it the 65 cadence test. And that's the first one. We go up this uh, relatively short hill, quite steep. And uh, the goal is to arrive at spending the same time on all motors. And we do that by maintaining the same cadence and we're riding in the same gear with a 29er back wheel. Looking at the data, it tells us how hard the rider has pushed, how much power the rider has put into the pedals, because we're using Garmin power pedals. And as long as we finish the run in the same time with the, each motor, it tells us how much power the motor has contributed with. So let's have a look at the data. It takes about one minute and 10 seconds riding this segment. And we have to pedal 160 watts on the Bosch SX. And that's quite a bit more than the full power motors that are below, well below even, 100 watts. It's not a big problem. Sure, the difference is very noticeable. And on the Shimano EP8 RS, we don't really have to put any power into the pedals. We have to put some power into the pedals riding the SX, but yeah. 160 watts going up this very steep hill, it's still quite nice. Then there's the 80 cadence test. We're sort of expecting the Bosch SX to come more to life as the cadence picks up, uh, because that's really what the specs of the motor tells us. Five, 55 Nm means it won't churn out a lot of power at lower cadence, but as uh, cadence picks up, the motor very likely continues to output near maximum torque and the power output will increase. In the 80 cadence test we got up the hill in just below one minute and sure enough the Bosch SX it only took another 23 watts to improve the time with like almost 15 seconds. We had to pedal 184 watts this time and that's still noticeably more than the full power motors especially compared to the Shimano EP801. Then there's the 100 cadence test. Will we continue to see the difference in rider input dropping as the cadence increases? No, not really. We had to pedal 239 watts. That's 55 watts more than we pedaled in the 80 cadence test. But compared to the two other motors, not too bad. I mean, uh, they both required about 150 watts, so 90 watts more. It's noticeable, but not too bad, I think, for a 55 Nm motor. We didn't test any higher cadence with the two other motors, but on this SX, we wanted to see what happens if we pedal as fast as we can. The run ended up being 126 RPM, and that's very fast pedaling. I'm sure no one really does that. The rider averaged 347 watts, 100 watts more than the 100 RPM test, but it's also much faster at 34 seconds. And doing this test pedaling as fast as we could, it really showed us what this motor is all about. Yeah, you don't have to pedal 120 cadence, but it's so rewarding just pedaling fast with this motor. And you will most likely easily go over motor cutoff speed at uh, these kind of cadences. And 
that's quite okay because this motor feels uh, it feels more efficient than the full power motors pedaling without any assistance. We also tried doing a test loop comparing these three motors. It's a very unscientific test because uh, we're riding these bikes even though we rode them at the same day in the same conditions, same temperatures. We hit different lines every time and it's quite random when we are able to pedal and when we have to coast. But looking at the data, there were just like four, three, four, five seconds between them. A bit surprising perhaps, but the Canyon Neuron on fly with the SX motor, it should have an advantage on these kind of trails because it's got a fast rolling, relatively hard rubber compound, uh, Nobby Nick rear tire. We were pretty much shot after every run, so it felt equally as exhausting riding all three bikes. And even though you might argue the Canyon bike with the SX motor lost, it wouldn't matter to me the difference in speed and time, because the SX motor and the Canyon bike is very fun and inspiring to ride on these kind of trails. But yeah, you have to decide for yourself if you think that difference in time and speed is significant. What we noticed was it was easier pedaling or riding the full power motors in these conditions because we had to pedal a lot and we had to coast over obstacles. And when we started pedaling again, we could just ride a slightly heavy gear, especially on the Shimano, and we would have lots of power when we started pedaling. But on the Bosch SX, we would sort of have to try and predict which gear we wanted to be in to get the maximum motor boost. So a bit more inspiring way of riding perhaps. And it doesn't really matter that much, but that could be what made the Bosch SX spike a few seconds slower on this uh, test loop. So to sum it up, the Bosch SX motor it can't really compete with the full power motors, not in any conditions, I think. Well, we didn't test it at 126 cadence against the other motors. And the big deal with the SX motor is that even though the peak torque isn't that high, the torque curve seems very wide. So it might actually beat out those motors at in sort of insanely high cadences. Uh, I think this motor, someone has called it a mid-power motor and that's a nice description because it offers more power than most lightweight MTB motors. And uh, it will take you up the hill calm and rested and sh sure it will take more time than on a full power motor but to me that doesn't really matter. That's it. Appreciate any likes and subscribes. Thanks for watching.